What's going on Code Squad? Today we're going to learn how to utilize the navigation bar which comes from React Navigation. In addition, we're going to learn how to utilize functions from our icons like the alert button. Pretty cool, right? I thought you would say so. Let's get to it. Baby, so we have our profile.js file and our profile stack screen.js file open and what we're going to focus on today is how to add a navigation bar using the react navigation so what we can do is jump into our screens file and we're going to work with the profile stack screen for now so instead of using navigation options of header null we can delete that and provide a title of anything that we wish so let's just say nil vac biz for now Command save that and we get a navigation bar with with um, our title I think I got a warning because I was using the hot reloading while trying to update the stack screen so we'll just disable the hot reloading and now what we want to do is Let's change the background color of the nav bar. So to do that, we can say header style. And we can say background color. And let's get creative RGB. Let's say 212. Let's say 211. And let's say 25. I have no idea what that color is going to give me, so let's find out. Will it be pink? Ooh, no, it's green and yellow. All right. Anyways, now let's say we want to change the color of the font, and if we had an icon, that would change as well. To do that, we could say we could jump out of header style, stay inside of navigation options. So we'll add it right here and say header tint color and we could say something like white or whatever color you wish. Command R that and now it's white and we can also say header title style and this will change the styling of our text so we can say something like font size if we want it to be bigger we can say like 20 let's just say 25 so it'll be more visible for now we can say font color no we could say uh font weight i'm sorry and we can make it even bolder So save that, run that, and it's a little bit bigger and it's more bold, so it stands out a little bit better. However, we'll just keep the original font size. All right, Code Squad, so now what we want to work with is adding a button. So to do this, we can do jump out of header title styles stay inside of navigation options so we could say something like header right and we could have our I always do this man all right so <laughs> what we want to do is add a parentheses and not the brackets so what we can now do is run our touchable opacity and we could run our icon so of course we would have to import those import touchable opacity from react native import icon from react native vector icons forward slash ion icons and 
and uh, we could say name equals to Hold on, let me see what the name is for this icon really quickly. It's called iOS settings outline. So we could say iOS settings outline. And let's see what this gives us so far. React must be in scope when using JSX. So that just means that we have to import React from React. And now we can run that. And I see a very, very small button right here. So let's go ahead and make it bigger. So we say size equal to, let's just say 25. And we could say color equal to white. It's a little bit bigger and it's white. <clears throat> and we can also bring over the margin from our touchable opacity. And we could also, let's see. So we would just do something like style equals margin right eight and we also will want an unpress function so unpress equal to let's just say alert hello Let's see how that looks. So command R, it pushed it over a bit and it ran the alert hello function. And if you also notice that when we pressed command R, the function ran before we unpressed this, that's because we didn't we didn't create the function. To be honest, I'm not sure how to word it, but if you don't put this function here, this fat arrow function, then the function runs automatically. It doesn't run when the when you press it. And when you press the button, the function occurs. So it's kind of hard to word, but this is the way to, to do it. So you put the function here, and now when you press it, the function occurs. So I apologize if my wording isn't the right, correct language or wording, but that's what you do. All right, squad. So the fact of the matter is that we most likely would not want to run our function within profile stack screen. We will want to run it from within profile.js because we might have variables and constants that we would want to run from within our profile.js. So. In order to essentially bring our our uh, our button over, we would run static navigation options. We would say navigation. Let's bring a space over there space right here, fat arrow, we would say return. And actually, let's go ahead and shorthand that. So instead of writing return, we could just put a parentheses before our brackets. And that essentially means the same thing. We could say header right, because we want the button to be in the right hand corner of our header our nav bar and we could say let's close these out and now we could put our touchable opacity and icon right here but let's just do something 
different. Let's do button because I don't think we've used that before. So just to show a different variety of options that we have, we can do button and button is pretty similar to the touchable opacities. And I mean, when I say that, I mean that we have the unpressed parameter. We could say this dot handle, let's just call it show alert. We have title. We could say alert. And we could just say color. And let's make that white. Let's comment this out for now. And let's close out our settings icon button. So that's header right, which is right here. So we'll comment all of this out and we rerun this. And now we should see our alert right here. So it's saying that unpress is marked as required, but it's undefined. So whenever you have a button, you have to have the unpress uh, parameter used. We rerun it and it's still being marked as undefined. So let's try this and we're still getting errors. So essentially for our our button within the nav our unpressed function within the navigation options it's run a little bit differently we have to say navigation dot get param and we would call where do we we didn't even create the function, did we? All right, so let's create the function. Let's say handle show alert. And we'll just say alert. We are showing an alert. And just to demonstrate that even this, if this was here, we will still get the previous errors that we had. So we have the handle show alert and we run the handle show alert on press. So command run and we still get that the on press is undefined. And even if you put the parentheses there, we still get the same error. So we're still having the same mistake. So like I said, we have to run it a little bit differently and we have to say navigation dot get param. And our parameter is gonna be called the same name as our function. So handle show alert. But before we get the param, we have to set the param or set the parameter. So we will do that under component did mount. And we will say this dot props dot navigation dot set param. And the parameter is handle show alert. And we will want to set that to be equal to this dot handle show alert. And this is just saying that it wants us to put this into our prop types. So import prop types from prop types profile dot prop types equals 
prop types. Um, tripping again, navigation, prop types, dot object. And that error goes away. So now when we run it, it's saying unexpected token in line 38. That's because we were supposed to put a semicolon there, not a comma. So rerun this. And now when we press alert, it actually comes up. All right, Coast Squad, so we still have this warning with the, the unpress is marked as required, but its value is undefined. Although the function is still running, alert, we are showing an alert, we are showing an alert, an alert. So if you happen to know why this warning, warning is still occurring, please let everybody know in the comments section because I don't work that much with the buttons. I always use the touchable opacity combined with the icon or either the text. So I have no idea, but if you know, please let us know down in the comments. So actually if we change it to touchable opacity, uh, then we still have our text. We can always say touchable opacity. Uh, then we would close this out with touchable opacity, put our closing tag, and we then close that out and now we added a closing tag automatically so let's delete that we have it already here and we will want to add the title of alert so for us to do that we will have to put That goes away. That goes right there. And this, it made itself in closing because it's nothing inside of it, but we're gonna put a text in here. And this text is gonna say alert. So let's see what that looks like. Command R, Command Run, and we get the alert. And we're showing an alert. So it comes up and there's no warning. And of course we can always style our, alert, style our alert like we always do. And we can do the same thing with touchable opacity to make the, to make the uh, button go over a little bit. So we'll do that really quickly. So for touchable opacity, we'll say style equals styles dot, let's just say right header right style and we probably will, will want we probably will want the margin right to be pushed over eight pixels see what that bad boy looks right looks like didn't save it here it's pushed over a little bit now. And for text, let's just say style equals styles dot header right text. And add it over here. And we could say something like font size equal to I'm not sure what size would be good, so we'll just play with it. Command save, command S for command save, and we command R for command run, and it made it a little bit bigger. And you know, you can always change your color from black to white. Like so. And there we have it, no warnings and the button is working. So we could work with that code squad.